Hello, good evening and welcome to Nationwide. I am Kenne Ema Abudike. President Mohamed Buhari has left Abuja for South Korea to participate in the first World Bio Summit in Seoul. The summit, jointly organized by the Republic of Korea and the World Health Organization, has as its theme the future of vaccine and biohealth. The president was seen off at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport by his chief of staff, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, FCT Minister Mohamed Musa Belur, Director General DSS Yusuf Magajibichi, and other top government officials. Nigeria will be at the Seoul summit with five other African countries, which were selected by the World Health Organization and the European Union during the last EU African summit in Brussels, Belgium. The summit was held in February this year for mRNA technology transfer and global training hub for biomanufacturing of vaccines on the African continent. Also expected to feature at the World Bio Summit are CEOs of global vaccine and biologics companies who will share and shape ideas on the future of vaccines and biohealth. According to the organizers, global health security profoundly depends on innovation and development in the bio industry. The summit is therefore part of deliberate attempts to launch international stage efforts on the nature and of creativity and innovation required to contain any future health pandemic. President Buhari is expected to deliver Nigeria's national statement at the summit and thereafter hold bilateral talks with President Yoon suk Yeol of the Republic of Korea. Chinese President Xi Jinping has been elected for a third five-year term as General Secretary of the Chinese Communist Party, CCP. The 20th Congress of the Communist Party in China concluded on Saturday where a new committee was inaugurated. Following his election, the Chinese president said the world needs China just as his country cannot develop without the world. Adding that after more than 40 years of unflagging efforts towards reform and opening up, China has curated two miracles, rapid economic development and long-term social stability. The new committee of the party includes 205 members, with women making up only 5.36% of the total. China's Congress is one of the most important events in China's political life, during which the results of the last five years are summed up and the plans for the country's future are drawn up. It is held once every five years. Now, the supporters of the All Progressives Congress presidential candidate APC Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu and governorship candidate in Delta State Ovia Omoagege have embarked on a million man match in solidarity support for their candidature ahead of the 2023 general election. Tacey Koka covered the exercise in Wari. It was a huge crowd of supporters at the Oil City of Wari. They are here in their numbers to place their support for Tinibu and Omo Agege. Like a carnival of sorts, they occupy the major streets in the city. The participants say they are sending a strong message to those who believe the APC has no political structure to win elections in Delta State come 2023. They are saying that, uh, that uh, there's no APC in Delta State and you can see the mammoth crowd all over the place because they have seen the antecedent that come to the they will display their love for Nigerians by voting to the people and they will display their love for their state. Music in its full blare, the group marched through major streets displaying placards with messages relating to the 2023 general elections. Their destination is the Petroleum Training Institute Center, where the organizers address the crowd. We are here on our own solution. Nobody convinces us 
Once a candidate has been made, in fact, it is the responsibility of anybody to choose any style within the confine of the law to work for him. So this one million man march is voluntary activity. And this is just testing the mic before. It's not a borrow crowd. We did not borrow any crowd. We want a new government, we want a new delta, we want to build from where they are hoping to mobilize more people to come out and vote for APC as a Saba Delta State Capital is next to host the rally. Worry, focus on Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi has appealed to the federal government and the international community to swing into action and intervene in the current flood situation that has devastated almost all parts of Bayelsa State. The presidential hopeful was on a sympathy visit to the state to access the level of devastation caused by the flood when he visited the internally displaced persons camp at Oxbow Lake, Yenegua. Fred Oifie reports. Cries of biosense have not gone on head as the nation and indeed the international community are now well abreast with the situation of the flood which has taken the dimension of a disaster. Presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, who was on a sympathy visit to the government and people of the state, encouraged and assured them that they are not alone in this trying time of their lives. It is important to remember those who have not been prepared Bayelsa State Governor Senator Doye Diri called for partnership with the federal government for a lasting solution to the perennial flooding challenge in his state. As I go around, Excellency, visiting my people, I can see the life that comes into them. I can see the inspiration that comes into them. At the Osbo Lake Internal Displaced Persons Camp, flood victims were elated to see the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, in company of the state governor to sympathize with them. Fred Owefie, NTA News. Yoruba community and the federal capital territory have declared support for the All Progressives Congress presidential candidate Senator Bola Ahmed Tinibu and his running mate, Senator Kashim Shetima. They were at the APC presidential campaign office to pledge support and prayers for success of the presidential candidate and all APC candidates for 2023 general election. We have looked at the antecedent of all the candidates and uh, we discovered that as you are through Ahmed Bola Tinobu is the best among all of them. Come 29 of May 2023, it will be there by the special grace of God. This is showing us that our leader, as you are through Ahmed Tinobu and the Vice President, Senator Kashima Setima, will going to be victorious in 2023 to be President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. APC Presidential Campaign Council member who received the delegation appreciated them and assured that APC will ensure that the interest of all Nigerians is accommodated if elected. In the meantime, Nigeria's unity and diversity is an invaluable asset every Nigerian needs to guard jealously, irrespective of cultural and ethnic affiliations. This is the position of Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bose Mustafa, who recently associated with his Keith and Keen from Adamar State under the aegis of the Hoba Development Association in Abuja. Metari Ben tells us more. <laughs> Cultural display by Hoba indigents in Abuja, creating a feeling of home away from home. They hail from Hong, local government area of Adamawa State. With a rich history and tradition, the mountainous community has produced many distinguished public servants and eminent Nigerians. 
One of them is the secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, who uses this forum to admonish his people and indeed Nigerians on the need to cherish education. And I don't want us to lose that because this is what is keeping us where we are. And that is what is going to inform the future tra trajectory of our community. How many of our people are skilled? How many of our people are properly empowered uh, for the generation of enterprise, business and wealth? The growing influence of the Hubbard Development Association Abuja is encouraging a bond with friends and associates from other cultures. I am a member of this community and a proud one at that. The Hubbard community may be a small one, but certainly a highly blessed community, full of warriors, heroes, heroes, full of personalities who are very successful in various sectors of the economy. They have also been contributing to the peace, unity and progress of the state. It really is a community that you need to identify with them because if the Hoba people succeed, it's either more that they succeeded. To facilitate socio-economic development of its members, the Hoba Development Association is planning and mobilizing resources to build a befitting edifice in the nation's capital that will be a rallying point for its sociocultural activities and programs. In Abuja, Mitaire Ikwen, NTA News. This is Nationwide on NTA. Adeola is standing by in Lagos with more news. Hello, Adeola. Hello, Kenny. Increase in government spending in an environment that cannot absorb the money in circulation through adequate production of goods and services often leads to inflation. In this report, Adeni Yitaiwo takes a look at how this macroeconomic imbalance can be better addressed by the financial and productive sector in Nigeria. At the moment, one of the major economic issues in the world is rising inflation its impact on purchasing power and burgeoning cost of consumer goods. Not immune to certain global realities, Nigeria, with its huge dependence on imported goods and services, is caught up in the current global economic crisis, with inflation rate hitting a new height of 20.52% in August 2022, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. My question here is that actually what's been happening on the way they manage the macroeconomy with the multiple exchange rates, with some of the other issues, you know, it could have been much better. And I think the question you may want to ask is why didn't anyone take the important choices in the economies of adjusting, of correcting the, the distortions in the macroeconomy? Reiterating its call on the bank to sustain its tax potential regime. While government is busy with other monetary policies to show up the numbers, Experts say it is time for the nation to leverage its large market to push the non-oil sector promotion drive of the federal government. What we need to consider is how to evolve wealth creation. That's really what we need to focus a lot on. For that to happen, experts advise on the need to have inclusive growth across all the subsectors with improved and sophisticated product offerings. You have these very large firms that employ lots of Nigerians in what they call high value jobs and of course provide services that are critical to the nation. They are also connected to every other company, every other government entity that actually wants to improve itself and perform competitively. With the introduction of State of Enterprise Report, business leaders say it is time to address the fallout of policies that have created distortions in the microeconomy. In Lagos, Adeni Itaewo, NT News. 150 Nigerians are benefiting from the United States Digital Skills Support Program. Lynn Leneke reports that five-week training has commenced in Lagos for the beneficiaries. 
Data from the National Bureau of Statistics shows that unemployment rate in Nigeria is estimated to reach 33% in 2022. This figure was projected to translate in 32.5% in 2021. Such projections are worrying. However, a group of professionals in collaboration with the United States Consulate are looking to turn the challenges into opportunities by organizing series of training to equip Nigerian youths with digital skills within the technology space. Because we recognize the immense talent that is present in Nigeria, especially amongst its youth. So we are committed to investing in the youth of Nigeria, especially in the STEM fields. 150 young Nigerians have been selected to undergo training in cinematography, web design, and computer engineering. I plan to make use of these things to inspire others and also train others. It's going to give me a deeper insight of what I'm to expect in the, ter in the theoretical aspects. The five weeks capacity building also seeks to ensure gender parity and provide women the opportunity to contribute to creating sustainable and economic prosperity for Nigeria. Technical field is basically for men and that is not what we want at this point. So we want to change the narrative and make tell the world that female gender can actually participate. Into the youths, we want them to see reasons why they don't need to spend too much. We can do the big thing with the little understanding you have about laptop. Participants are expected to be today's change makers with their innovation through inventions, creativity and integrated STEM development. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. And that's all from the Center of Excellence. Time now for a break after which Nationwide will continue with a smile in Sokoto. But do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nca.ng slash live and on our other verified social media handles displayed on the screen for updates. To stay on. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Sokoto on Nationwide. Sokoto State Police Command has recorded success in crime prevention by parading 10 suspects for alleged criminal conspiracy, kidnapping, banditry and culpable homicide. The suspects were paraded at the command headquarters in Sokoto. Shehu Muhammad Deti reports. Suspect Sokoto State Commissioner of Police Muhammad Hussein Gubel said Abakara Ali, you popularly known as Buba, was cited while on admission at orthopedic hospital Wamoko, receiving treatment and identified by a victim's brother. He criminally conspired with others and kidnapped a 55-year-old man, demanded for naira as ransom. The culprit collected the money and killed the victim and his father who went to pay the ransom. Also arrested were gunmen who inflicted serious injuries when a male victim took away his handset and kidnapped a female victim who later jumped up the moving motorcycle and she was rescued by good Samaritans. Others arrested Arinze Onyeka of Mabere area who attacked two persons with a gun and collected their handsets. The commissioner of police also said Yusuf Umar and 16 others were arrested with hard drugs and other dangerous weapons. They stormed Erzakua district in Rabah local government and rustled a number of sheep and cows. 96 sheep and 30 cows were recovered. All the suspects will be charged to court after investigation. The efforts are ongoing with the local government to locate the owners of this animal for handling. Please separate this information around because we know that those animals are rustled from other communities and they are still under the custody of the police. Owners should come forward and identify them and take them back. The Commissioner of Police, Muhammad Hussein Gumel, commended working journalists in the state for being partners in progress and appealed to members of the public to assist the command with vital information in getting rid of crime and criminality in the state. In Sokoto, show Muhammad Dati, NTA News. The KB State Office of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons has raised an alarm over the increasing rate of child trafficking through the state, urging parents to be watchful of the increasing menace. The commander, Napti Kebi State, Ms. Bahu Iyakara, stated this in his maiden address in Burning Kebi. Abdullahi Umar Ilelu reports. The Kebi State Office of the Agency, which took off less than a month ago, 
has so far succeeded in rescuing 29 victims in various parts of the state. 21 of them were intercepted along Kangiwa Axis on their way to Mauritania, while the remaining eight were arrested at different locations of the state en route to Libya. Ms. Bahu Iyakaura is the state commander of the agency. Uh, the agency has the power arrest, investigate, and prosecute offenders of human trafficking, child labor, child abuse, and gender-based violence. He charged people of the state to support the agency in its effort to address the scourge of trafficking in persons by providing useful information, adding that they will soon embark on an extensive enlightenment campaign across the state. I cure the good people of the uh, state, the readiness of NAPTIF in fighting human trafficking, child labor, child abuse, gender-based violence at any given time. All the 29 victims have been transported back to their states of origin. Abdullah Omar Ilalu, NTA News. And that's it from here. Do not forget to follow our news on nta.ng slash live and all other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. That's it from here. It's back to Kenya and Abuja for the continuation of the news. Thank you very much, Asmau. Now, the federal government has earmarked Kaduna Eastern Bypass Highway as one of the roads infrastructure in the country receiving priority attention to ensure speedy completion of the project. The Minister of State for Works and Housing, Umaru Ibrahim El Yaqub, started this while inspecting the progress of work on the Eastern Kaduna Bypass Road, one of the oldest projects in the Northwest Zone. Adamo Sunday reports. The project, which was neglected 20 years ago, is being attended to following President Mohamed Ubari resolve to translate critical infrastructure to the development and prosperity of Nigerians. Substantial amount of work has been done on Section 2 Kaduna Zaria Road that used to be a nightmare to commuters as a result of potholes causing traffic gridlock. We had looked at the two damaged bridges in Kaduna, Riga Chukun, and uh, w assessment has been done. The first one is the Riga Chukun Bridge and the Dumbi Bridge. Procurement process is going on so as to bring the contractor very soon to site. Also undergoing a massive turnaround is the Zaria Funtua Road, of which 7.3 kilometers is dual carriageway. The minister says he is happy with the quality and progress of work done. There's innovative ways of financing infrastructure, road infrastructure, by the administration of President Mohamed Bari is yielding a lot of positive results, which is bringing soccer to the people, to the motorists, is improving uh, uh, the flow of traffic and certainly increasing our economic activities. Engineer's representative Alice Onagiri affirmed that the Zaria Funtua Road would be completed in the next six months. Meanwhile, the minister also paid a costly visit to the Kaduna state government. Thank you very much for making out the time to come and see how far these constructions have gone. Adamu Sunday, NTA News. To education now, where Unity schools across the country will get more attention to take them to a more enviable pedestal. Minister of State for Education, Good Luck, Nana Opia, made this known during a tour of federal government colleges in Lagos. Hengeno John Adams reports. A rousing welcome there by students of the Queen's College, Yaba, Lagos, for the August Visitor, Minister of State for Education. The reception is a way of saying thank you to the federal government for massive investments in both intellectual assets and infrastructure in unity schools across the country. At the King's College, Victoria Island, the minister met the boys well, as Africans will say taking breakfast. In all the colleges visited, it was a father and children moment as the minister interacted with the students, assuring them that they will continue to benefit from more developmental initiatives in order to continue to stand strong and compete favorably in the nation's education system. I'm impressed with what I saw in the uh, Queen's College. It's very outstanding. But completely above average. The King's College is not uh, blackened either. 
went to one of the campuses and uh, almost everything is in place. Not satisfied with what he saw at the Federal Science and Technical College, Yaba, the minister was emphatic that government will continue to ensure maximum use of facilities provided. Some of the facilities are not uh, even in use at all. Um, you saw things with me. This place has capacity to even generate revenue for the government and to sustain itself. As the minister continues to tour Unity schools across the country, it is expected that more transformation will be seen in the 110 federal government colleges. In Lagos, Hinginu John Adams, NTA News. And the federal government, through its social investment program, has inaugurated the At-Risk Children Program, ARCP, in on the state to mop out out-of-school children off the streets and engage them productively. The special advisor to the president on social investment, Miriam Ways, inaugurated the on the state project adversary committee with wife of the state governor, Mrs. Betty Anyangwa Akeridolu, as chairperson. Abiola Rio reports. The federal government's at-risk children program, ACP, in collaboration with Ondo State Government, seeks support for vulnerable and at-risk children and youths by providing so-called for young people below age 24. It's also important to get their skills for those who don't have skills. It's an important time I found in many places that what attracts a lot of parents, especially in the rural areas, is to have to combine skills with education. The primary mandate of getting the opportunity, apart from security and protection, and lives and property of the citizens, so for their total well-being. The project will cover the 18 local government areas of Ondo State. The remains now is for us to sit down and begin the work. The project directly impact not only about employees of the state, but we have 50 other governments. ACP is an ambitious and strategically designed initiative of the federal government under the office of the vice president and led by the special advisor to the president on social investment in Akure, Abiola, Rio, NTA News. Let's now join Chinanya in Enugu. is said to be the smallest unit of the society and that is why the Anglican Archbishop of Enugu Ecclesiastical Province and Bishop of Enugu Diocese, Most Reverend Emmanuel Chukuma, wants couples to uphold Christ's teaching on the nature of marriage, raise godly children and lead a Christian family life worthy of emulation. He was speaking at the service where he admitted over 200 women and 100 girls into various groups of the diocese. Diana Alumona reports. Putting these girls and women into the groups, most Reverend Chukuma reminded them of the objective of the Girls Guild, which among others is to provide a unique opportunity for the girls to learn how to keep themselves pure in heart, mind and body, and to teach them the way of discipleship through Bible reading, prayer and devotion. The objective of the Mother's Union Women Guild, according to the Anglican Archbishop, is to raise godly women who will be like the biblical virtuous women. The character, I think that beauty is the outward beauty. But innermost beauty must be a facade of beauty. Innermost character of the woman that brings out the beauty of the woman. And so they must exhibit it. Husbands of the women admitted into the mother's union were present at the event. And so the archbishop prayed for them to become godly men, good husbands to their wives and responsible fathers to their children. It was all thanks to God as the congregation filled that intense giving to God with their gift. Wife of the Anambra State Governor, Mrs. Nonye Soludo, wants the people of the state and indeed all Nigerians to come to the aid of victims of flood to complement efforts of the government. She was speaking when she paid a visit to the Unity Hall camp where internally displaced persons from Umueri in Anambra East Council are sheltered. Udo Okorongwo Chuku reports. 
The IDP camp is one of the camps in Anambra East local government area with 1,750 displaced persons received by the State Commissioner for Health and officials of the WHO and UNICEF. Mrs. Soludo inspected the camp where medical services are being rendered by the state and the international agencies to the crowd of expectant and fallen looking victims. Stripped of every position, Mrs. Soludo distributed items, especially to pregnant women. She offered words of hope while assuring them of government's efforts towards bringing soccer their way. For me, it's life after this place because we know what they're going through. Everything they have, I mean everything, their land, houses, properties, everything is underwater. Everything is submerged underwater. So please, everybody should come to their help. The Commissioner for Health said the government is working around the clock to prevent outbreak of diseases through effective healthcare delivery to the camps. It has lifted their spirits, and then as, as much as they are displaced, but you can see they are very happy. Mrs. Soludo will extend the kind gesture to other IDPs in the states. Inoka, Udo Okoron Kwachuku, NTN News. And those are the stories from Enugu. It's back to Kene in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Watching nationwide on the NTA, it's time for break. Jer Welcome back. The number of recorded deaths in the Gambia following the use of the substandard cough and cold syrups produced in India has increased from 66 to 70. Haman Javani reports that the government of Nigeria has taken all measures to stop the syrups from entering the market. Known as the pharmacy of the world, India supplies 40% of all generic medicines to Africa. The death of the 70 children in the Gambia, one of the worst of such incidents involving drugs from India, have come as a blow to the industry. Indian health authorities say they have halted all production and manufacturing activities of made in pharmaceuticals firm after contraventions were observed during the investigation and its potential risks. WHO is conducting further investigation with the company and regulatory authorities in India. WHO recommends all countries detect and remove these products from circulation. In Nigeria, the federal government through NAFTAC sent out red alert and all modalities have been put in place to stop the syrup from coming into the market. Notify healthcare providers and awaken the consciousness of the public of these four substandard products identified in the Gambia. Some Nigerians on the street of Apuja commended the action taken by WHO and the federal government to send out warning on the drugs. The government of Nigeria and uh, NAVDAG itself should go to India and try to see and uh, make sure that whatever drugs they are producing there that was supposed to be shipped into Nigeria, uh, it should be stopped and they should look into it carefully. In this form, if there's any drugs I need to do, I have to go to the hospital to make sure I need the right doctor to help me to check, help me check if this drug is fit for me or my children. So I think we should be careful with whatever drugs we take. The hospital gives drugs that meet the NAVDA standard. As of now, the drugs are only in the Gambia. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. As still talking health, in 2020, Nigeria was certified polio-free by the World Health Organization and efforts to sustain this status must not regress for the country to achieve a healthier future for mothers and children, which is the focus of the 2022 World Polio Day. Rotary International District 9125, as always, is taking the lead in ensuring Nigeria's success story is not marred. Oche Ugochuku reports. Just two doses of polio vaccine at birth would have prevented Nena Alauko from being in this wheelchair. Not deterred by her physical deformity, she lends her voice to ensure no child is again affected by polio virus in Nigeria, as well as advocates for more conducive environment for polio survivors. We don't have access to health healthcare. Also, education, many of us are graduates because they think that we are polio, polio survivors. They don't employ. They think that polio affected everything. But polio affected only my leg. But my brain, my mind and brain is working. 
the Rotary International of District 9125 through to the streets of Abuja to spread awareness about the disease ahead of the 2022 World Polio Day observed 24th October annually. One polio anywhere in the world is a threat to the whole world. Vaccination does not kill anybody. Vaccination only helps to boost our immunity. Polio virus is a vaccine-preventable crippling disease that is transmitted through contaminated water, food, or contact with an infected person. And the symptoms are very non-specific. In the sense that they will just come down with headache, fever, stomach pain, very non-specific things, diarrhea, sometimes vomiting. Two to five days later, that will wear off. But in very severe cases, few percentage of them will end up with meningitis or paralysis. Routine immunization and good personal hygiene, experts say, will help Nigeria maintain zero polio cases. Uche Ugochuku, NTA News. And medical experts have reminded caregivers about the importance of vaccinating children from 9 to 59 months of age against measles and other childhood diseases. This was at the Cross River State Primary Health Care Development Agency sensitization program on measles in Calabar. Maureen Leo Ajum reports. Calabar Cross River State being enlisted and awarded best immunization state in Nigeria, the Cross River State Primary Health Care Development Agency says it will not relent in ensuring suspected immunization gaps are preached. The child that is not immunized, not vaccinated against measles, does not have protection. Once that child comes in contact with the measles virus, that severe attack will after either take the life of the child or leave the child with a disability. The days integrated measles vaccination campaign is expected to target over 700,000 children in Koshiro State. Although there have been pockets of measles infection reported cases in the state a few months ago. The Cross River Primary Health Care Development Agency says the situation was checked without recording any fatality using its routine reactive campaign strategy, especially in IDP camps. Now we are backing on the measles campaign, of course, integrated measles campaign, uh, because I'm um, not just that we focusing on measles. Other services will also be rendered, the routine immunization as well as the COVID vaccination. Across different parts of the country, uh, you will always have these issues of uh, some, some parents not wanting their children to get vaccinated. For the integrated measles vaccination campaign, stakeholders are calling on parents and caregivers to avail their children aged 9 to 59 months for the booster measles vaccination. In Calabar, Maureen Liu, Ajom, NTA News. We now go over to our Benin Network Center, where Agatha is standing by. Thank you, Kenne. A warm welcome to Benin. Seven days after the heavy duty unit of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, Edo North Branch, blocked the Aochi J2 axis of the Aochi Okene Abuja Highway, the road has been opened. Now, this followed outcome of the meeting of the Otaru of Aochi with the Federal Controller of Works in Edo State and Drivers Union this morning. Victor John Acha reports that the federal government representative made a commitment to embark on palliative work immediately. The heavy duty unit of National Union of Road Transport Workers, Edo North Branch, on Monday last week, blocked the Auchi Aziz of the Benin Abuja Highway, protesting the deplorable situation of the federal road. This has caused a lot of hardship to road users and the residents of Edo North. Hence, the intervention of the Otaru of Auchi, His Royal Highness Ali Rumomo Ikelebe III, who in a meeting with the union leaders and federal controller of works in Edo State, gave a 24-hour ultimatum to the union to open the road after hearing from the Federal Controller of Works on machineries being put in place to ensure palliative. The Federal Controller of Works in Edo State said both the federal and state governments have not been resting on the failure of some portions of the road. The issue of the blockage has been resolved even before now because the issue is at Epoma and uh, Agbede, of which the people have already agreed to solve 
the, 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 the storm water problem and also the right of way problem, which they've brought a letter that they don't want any issue at all about right of way. And with that, the contractor is moving right to the road on Monday. The junior members, however, promised to comply with the directive. We need the federal uh, state government uh, assistance to open the state road so that they can go, uh, some, of, some of the truck can go through yes. the state road. At the time of filing this report, the road has been opened while no mercy is gradually returning. Victor Odion Acha. Our Christian religion leaders are former leaders within the Christian religion. Their roles and functions vary, but usually involve presiding over specific rituals and teaching doctrines and practices of their faith. They are often most respected in their communities. So, how then do they contribute to home building? Good luck in Naini will tell us. Religious leader is someone who is recognized by a religious body as having some authority within that body. In Catholicism, any of a member of individuals, including priests, cardinals, bishops, and the supreme pontiff. Both at the family and community levels, religious leaders have the power to raise awareness and influence attitudes, behaviors, and practices. They play essential roles in shaping social values in line with faith-based teachings, messages of hope, good neighborliness, fear of God, is what these religious leaders say should dominate their teachings. Must continue as church leaders to emphasize our values, the value of honesty, the value of respect. But we must ensure that we make our home home good so that people will take us as an example unto themselves. I cannot come to preach the word before the people and Behind them, I'm doing the wrong thing. Since the building of an enduring family is a collective responsibility, these respondents want each family to live up to their responsibilities. If we follow the ideals of the Holy Bible, we will not have dysfunctional families. So the scripture says that we should not spare the rod and spoil the child. But many parents, they've left the rod and they are spoiling children. The respondents say until everyone recognizes the family unit as a crucial element, the dream of building and realizing world peace might be a mirage. In the name, good luck in any interviews. That's our package. Kenya has more on Nationwide. Thank you, Agatha. The National Senior Citizen Center, NSCC, has activated help desks for flood-affected older persons and internally displaced persons camps in the affected states and locations in partnership with the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Development Partners, State Emergency Management Agencies, and the NSCC Stakeholders Consultative Forum on Aging. In a statement by Head, Corporate Affairs, Media and Communications, Omin Yodeng, the NSCC Director General, Dr. M. M. Mokara, says the decision is necessitated by the high proportion of older casualties in the affected areas and the vulnerability of older women and men in such situations in the affected states of the Federation. In Delta State, where there are already over 10 camps curated, the NSCC help desks are already functional at most camps, including the Sokol and Ozoro IDP camps. Some of the services rendered at the NSCC help desks for the flood affected older persons are basic health checks, data capture, and collision of older persons who have expressed appreciation to the National Senior Citizen Center for coming to their aid, working in conjunction with the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, and the State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA. The management of the Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission, Hyperdeck, has reached out to the victims of both mishap in Wara, a community in Mokwa local government area of Niger State. Fatima Usman reports that 200 pieces of life jackets were presented to the community with financial assistance to those affected by the disaster. 
On the 13th of this month, a boat transporting 47 passengers on River Kaduna in Bala community, Mokwa local government area of Niger State, capsized, leaving 10 of the victims dead. In response to the disaster, officials of Hyperdeck paid a condolence visit to the people of the community and reassured them of the commission's commitment to give riverine communities a new lease of life. 200 pieces of life jackets were presented to the community for safety on the water ways and cash donation to survivors of mishap as well as families of the diseased. My header brother and my junior brother they are among the dead which is very very painful to me and the rest of the family. We are very very thankful to the government. We are now happy to see that we are safe to cross the river now without any fear because we have life jacket which we don't have before. I want a political will we are they will be able to make law to make sure anybody using our channel river channels in Niger State here should be used, they must make sure they use the life jacket. As part of its continued effort in ensuring safety on waterways, Hyperdeck is to continuously distribute safety life jackets to riverine communities. In Mina, I'm Fatima Usman, NTA News. The Akwaibom Command of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps has apprehended six suspects and impounded three trucks containing automotive gas oil. Kelvin Samuel reports that the operation was carried out by the anti-vandal unit of the Corps in Eket and the Ikorabasi local government areas of Akwaibom State. Raiding the suspect and exhibit before newsmen, the Commandant NSCDC Akwaibom State Command, Suleiman Mafara, says the command will continue to sustain the intensity in fighting oil thieves and vandals in the region in line with the mandate of the Corps. The Akwaibom State NSCDC Commandant is also warning persons who indulge in the illegal deal to stop henceforth and seek legitimate means of livelihood. We continue to solicit for the cooperation of the general public so that we can justify the competence which the federal government and the entire Nigerians reposes on NSCDC. The total of 90,000 liters of automotive gas oil, three trucks, six suspects and other exhibits are presently in the custody of the NSCDC awaiting further investigation and possible prosecution. In Uyo, Kevin Samuel, NTA News. The escape of convicts from custodial centers while serving conventional jail terms constitutes a serious breach of peace and social order. And to stem the tide of the menace, the Public Complaints Commission is strengthening the capacity of key players in systemic and proactive investigation. Abubakar Akwanga reports. The gory images from July 5, 2022, Koji Custodial Center attacks and other separate explosion and EV gunfire across similar centers in part of the country is necessitating this strategic session. And as part of its mandate to promote social justice, the Public Complaint Commission is bringing key players to the table to review strategies and enhance capacity of frontline agencies. Are over congested. So that's, when you, that's why you can have all these jail breaks. If they all, if they have enough, they can handle the, the people in the prison. We want to have the double walls, not just single walls, so that the attack there will be difficult. What would somebody who steals a yam be doing in prison? Have we looked at options of non custodial remands? This is where the Public Complaint Commission need to really sensitize our judges. There is need for a separate purpose built detention facility for the non-state actors, the terrorists. These stakeholders advocate strengthening of collaborative efforts in nipping the dangers in the board. In Abuja, Abubakar Akwanga, NT News. Sports update is next.